In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for saying, I'm going to choose to keep the commandments and to keep the Lord's day, the day that he rose for us, holy. And today we celebrate, of course, the Feast uh, of the Ascension, right? So um, who is called to live a higher life? Is it just Miller life? No, you are called to do that, right? And what is, is it Bob Dylan who gets high with the help of his friends? Was that Bob Dylan? Jess only listens to classical music, so she doesn't know. But, right, whoever it is, well, Christians were called to get high, but not high like drugs, but high is in our spiritual life. And follow Jesus, and he ascends into heaven, and he tells us that's the place for humanity. So for the times that we haven't lived as people who are destined for heaven, called to a heavenly way of living and loving, let's ask him to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the sender of the Holy Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, Almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving, for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. All you peoples, clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness, for the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our King, sing praise. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. For king of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. 
God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, he ascended on high and took prisoners captive. He gave gifts to men. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended into the lower regions of the earth? The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm going to borrow a little bit from uh, what I like to do when I have a wedding. Certain weddings, especially we call them convalidations, uh, where someone has been married civilly. Uh, and then they're going to get married in the church. I like to use this, this little teaching technique, so we're going to use this today. Before we do that, we've got to focus correctly. So many people know four kinds of aces. Right? What, are the, what are the aces that people know? Right? They know the ace of spades. We have uh, diamonds and hearts and clubs. And which one is like the greatest? Depends on, I guess, what game you're playing, because sometimes it's the lowest. I used to play spades uh, in college, enjoy that game. But in the 1990s, there was another ace that was introduced to the world. The ace of base. <laughs> ace of base. Some of you know ace of base. Some of you are like, what are you talking about, Father Dave? But if you know, you know. Right? And they had a hit song. Ace of base was a, was a band. Uh, and they had a hit song. Um, called I Saw the Sign. I saw the sign, and it does something. When you see the sign, it does something. What does it do? They'll tell you, if someone in your house knows, I saw the sign, and it opened up my, open up my eyes, or open up, I think it's open up my eyes, or open up my mind. It's one of those two. Someone will know. Tell me down below, right? I think it's opened up my eyes. I saw the sign. Yeah, right? And so the, it's very simple. Um, you see a sign, and your eyes are like, hey, and you're, maybe then your mind opens like there's another reality present, right? If you see a sign that says, uh, beware of dog, what does that tell you? There may be a dog here that you can't see but can smell you and it's coming for you and your pizza crusts, right? You see a sign, you you're maybe have a long flight, you're flying cross country or something, you're healthy and there's no COVID and it's safe to fly and all that. Uh, and you get off the airplane after a, a six hour cross country flight and what sign are you looking for? Luggage? No, you're looking for the bathroom, right? And you see the sign and you're like, ah, right? Restrooms this way. Right? You see the sign and it tells you, hey, there's another reality. There's a place that I, I can 
get some rest. <laughs> I'll just put it like that, right? You see the sign that reality is present, right? You know, pizza, you know, oh, hey, let's go get some pizza over there, right? There's these external manifestations of internal things, right? There's a restroom somewhere or a sign, right? For example, uh, you see a, a ring on, on someone's finger, right? That external sign of a, a, a wedding band tells you about their internal reality, right? That their soul is bound to someone, right? And if you see, you see, let's say, let's say you see someone go to a bar, maybe a, a group of girls uh, go to a bar, a bunch of guys go to the bar and you see them take off their rings. What does that tell you? Uh, that's a bad sign, right? It tells you bad stuff's up. All right, so what are we going to use this for here, right? So again, let's take a look at this. It's going to help us. At least I think it will, right? What do you have here? Right, it's a light bulb, right? And if you touch it, how does it feel? Right, it's cold. And if you described it, off, right? Someone just said off. <laughs> it's dark, right? And but what do I have here? This is like a very cheap battery that I got on Amazon. All right, so if I take this and I do that, what happens? Now, if you described it, what happens? Oh, it's on, right? It's, it's bright. If I touched it, it would start to get warm, right? And why? Well, what, what is the change? What happened? Right, well, the electrical energy stored in the battery, the chemical energy, the electrical energy stored in the battery is passing through it right now. Correct. Right, when you see this lit up, this is telling you, when you see this, it's telling you that there's another source of power moving through this thing, right? Because left to itself, it can't shine. Left to itself, it has, it has all the strength of copper wire and plastic and tin, whatever it's made out of, glass. But that's it. This can't give light or warmth to anything. It's just what it is. But when you see, if I can plug it in here, when you see that happening, it's telling you that something else is up, that there's another source of power given to it. And this external manifestation is a sign of an internal reality. What does that tell you about the gospel? Does that tell you about you and me and Jesus and the ascension? Because what happens when you see Almighty God ascend into heaven? What does that tell you? Well, it tells you he's going home? Well, yeah, sure, it tells you he's going home. But it also, what is he taking with him? He's taken humanity with him, right? Because God became one of us. That's why Christmas is so important. God comes here. He loves us. He teaches us. He's given us prophets and all that stuff. And then suddenly he steps into the world to push back the darkness. The light of the world comes into the world, right? As a human. But what is he doing? He's going to heaven and he's taking human nature with him. I'm going to sneeze. All right, he's taking human nature with him into heaven. Which, what does that mean? That means you and I are called to a higher life. But right, you and I are called to live in heaven. Like, you know, that in a football game, if someone carries the ball and they get it to the end zone, you're going to celebrate. Why? Because that means that that team you can score against. That means that your team's ball is in the end zone. They just scored. That's good for you. This is great for us that God goes to heaven. This is not just about what happened to Jesus, although it is. But the Feast of the Ascension means that you and I have a home in heaven. We talk about going to heaven. We talk about it like it's our home. But that wouldn't be true unless he brought us there. And that's what he's doing in the Ascension. And so when you see Jesus ascending into heaven, he's making a place for you and for me by bringing his humanity and our humanity, our human nature with him into the Father's house. But then what happens? Then he tells us, you know, you're going to see what? You're going to see the church. You're going to see people going out and they're going to be teaching and doing miracles and healing the sick and drinking deadly things and picking up serpents and stuff like that. And what is he saying is that, well, when you start to see miracles in the church, which is what will happen, Right, the apostles, well, let's talk about the apostles for a second, right? The apostles, they all run from Jesus and, and deny him, right? And, and leave him on Good Friday when he's dying and, and everybody runs, right? They want nothing to do with him. And then what happens, right? They're doing dark things. They, they betrayed him and they're regretful and they're sad. And then what happens? Boom, something happens because these apostles who ran from Jesus are now bravely going to the people who executed Christ, to the Jews and the Romans, and they're talking about Jesus, and they all go forth and they die for him, and they're saying the same thing, resurrection, 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 and they're healing the sick, right? St. Peter, his shadow falls on someone, and they get well. They're lining up the sick so that he could just walk past them and heal them. And all these great things start to happen as more people get who are sick start to get better, and demons are cast out, and these apostles are putting the light of Christ in the world. And when people see that and they see the miracles that the apostles are doing, 
they're like, wait a minute, there's another source of power here inside of them. Right? Paul and Barnabas will go to a town and they'll heal the sick and people are going to think that the gods have come to earth, the, like the Greek and Roman gods. And you'll be like, no, we're not God at all. We're not gods, but Jesus is working through us. Right? And so when you see the sign of miracles in the life of Christians, that's telling you that there's another source of power, that the God who came into the world is alive inside of them inside of you and me. And in fact, this is true in our life, right? We're supposed to see this, right? When you see, like, you know, you can think of Mother Teresa, right? Mother Teresa, you know, Mother Teresa, pray for us and pray for your, you know, people over there in India, right? When you see her, like, reaching out and trying to care for people rotting in the street, that's telling you her external actions of charity and kindness to the, the people that the world wants to forget are, are ridden with disease and bugs and sick and all that. That external action is telling you that there's another source of power inside of her, right? When you see like someone, uh, you, like you had in the second reading, God appoints people as preachers, as pastors, as teachers, right? When you see like maybe good young moms uh, with their kids volunteering at the parish to teach religion, teach CCD, and that happens here, what's happening? That's telling you externally that the life of Christ is alive inside of them as they're teaching not only their children, but other people's children about Jesus, right? When you see like maybe a good widow or something like that, get involved in the parish to make people feel welcome or to help in CCD or, or any making rosaries, any other, you know, ministry that happens helping people grieve. When you see those acts of kindness and charity, it's like, you know, you may not know the song, I saw the sign, but you know the sign, this little light of mine, right? It's the same reality. I'm going to let it shine. This is how you know your kids are ready to receive Holy Communion, right? Your kids, when they're little, right, they have to go to confession and all that because kids, once they age of reason, they can start to sin. You know, they know right from wrong and can choose to do wrong, but you know your kid is ready for Holy Communion. Why? Well, you see them saying their prayers at home because you're a family that prays at home, right? Yes, Father Dave. Yes, uh, we're going to start today, Father Dave. <laughs> right? You're praying on Sunday. Maybe you pray the rosary on Sunday. That's great. But your kids look forward. They start saying their prayers. They pray before meals. They want to know about Jesus. And you start to see them fight less and argue less and help out around the home. And when that's happening, that's telling you they're ready to receive Holy Communion, right? For our confirmation kids, right? Whatever age they do confirmation in your parish, right here, if they're going into high school in their first couple years of high school, right? They have to volunteer all around the world, right? Your kids have to volunteer and do service hours. What is that about? It's not like, well, you got to do these things to get in. No. If you're growing in the Christ life, if his life is growing in you, well, then there's going to be external signs of that. And that's going to be, it could be raking leaves for seniors. It could be volunteering at the food pantry. It could be cleaning up your church after you leave for mass. It could be helping out at home, right? It could be, well, it's going to literally be forgiving your enemies, saying your prayers, telling people about the Lord helping people through tough times, celebrating good times, right? All those are external signs of an internal reality, right? And this is true, of course, for marriage. To find out how I relate that a little more to marriage, you'll have to come to a wedding that I do, I guess. But when you see those signs of God coming and sending into heaven, that tells you that humanity has a place with him, which means we're called to live a higher life, right? So you're, are, you know, there are days, where, of course, where people want to just like eat chips and drool on themselves and do nothing, right? Everybody says, oh, I'm so tired. I just want to do nothing. Right? Nobody celebrates that. It's not like, hey, man, what'd you do with your two weeks vacation? Oh, I did nothing. I sat on the couch, scratched my armpits, ate chips, and fell asleep in my clothes. <laughs> like, huh, man, that's great. You had a great vacation. Like, everybody needs days of, like, rest. But we're made for higher things. Right? And we want to do those higher things. We want to do things where you're doing something kind and you're reaching out and doing something that gives you life and gives life to other people. We're made for that. And when you see people, when the higher things that people are doing freely is lifting people up and spreading light and joy and goodness, that's telling you about another life that's alive inside of them. But if you find that people are resistant to the, to the life of God, like you find that people don't want to pray and they want to sin, and they don't want to have anything to do with, well, with God's people, well, then they're unplugging themselves. And this is, of course, true for the church. Right? The church is supposed to be a place that passes. I'm really making a lot of this. I, I really like this, so we're using it. Right? The church, you're supposed to see the signs of God's life alive in the church. And you do as we 
right? As we preach and we teach and we heal the sick, we, lead, we try to lift the culture up around us in the darkness of all the junk that's out in the world, you're supposed to see the church as a place of light. Of course, when you see like priests sin and you see the church start to talk in ways that cloud the light, you know, where if the church starts to get into the, the muddy world of, let's say, politics and maybe says stuff to promote whatever, communism, um, I don't know, super consumerism, um, Green Bay Packer fanism, right? When the church does something other than the mission that Jesus gives it, it starts to cloud the light. And then that's not good. But this is what we're called to do. And Jesus, he says, right, he says, uh, those who, you know, those who believe will be saved. Those who don't believe will be condemned. What is that about? Didn't, can't Father Dave, didn't we talk a couple weeks ago about you get to go to heaven if you follow your conscience? Well, yes, right? You can go to heaven if you follow your conscience. But that's really true. That's true for all of us. We got to listen to our conscience. But for people who have never heard about Jesus, well, God doesn't forget them or throw them away. He puts his voice in them by their conscience. He does that for all of us. But for people that get to see the signs, to see Christians around them and hear the gospel and have their family and friends invite them to this higher life, if they resist that, ah, I don't want to. No, thanks. You know, church, that's for you. That ain't for me. Well, then Jesus' words are going to come true for them, right? The full teaching is, right, yeah, for those who have never heard the gospel, never met a Christian. It could be like, imagine like, again, uh, the Native American people living here before missionaries arrived. Right? Or people that only see you know, cruel Christians. Or someone raised in a Muslim country who has no idea about Jesus other than being taught that he's just a prophet. Right? For those folks, they have to follow their conscience. And when they, when they see God, they'll be like, oh my gosh, Jesus, I never knew you were God. And he's like, ah, yes, but you did when you followed your conscience. But for the rest of us who are blessed at baptism and blessed by being able to meet Christians, we have to respond to that sign that God is inviting us up to a higher life, and we're called to live it. But if you see people resist that, ah, I don't want to do that. Well, that's telling you something about their internal reality. And if you unplug from God, you're going to be like this light bulb. You're going to get darker and colder. And that trajectory is going to continue. Right? And so, Father Dave, how can I get that power that ran through the apostles, that ran through Padre Pio, right? Padre Pio who did mirac miracles healing the sick, who could appear in multiple places at the same time, who like helps pilots in the sky in the world wars, like, and, and could read your soul. If you went to Padre Pio for confession, right, um, you know, you'd be like, well, you know, maybe I lied and uh, I didn't say my prayers. And Padre Pio would be like, yeah, well, you also did this and this and this and this. Or he would be like, no, you're not telling me everything. Well, yeah, sure I am. And I'd be like, yeah, what about the time that you cheated on your spouse? Oh, well, you know, Padre Pio, he could read your soul. When you saw St. Padre Pio healing the sick, doing miracles, reading souls, appearing in multiple places, what's happening? That's a sign that the same life that was given to the apostles, the life that was alive in Jesus, was poured into him. It's poured into you and to me. How can you get that power? How can you get that life? How can this extra source of strength come to you to find that out? You'll have to come back next week. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. Let's raise our prayers of petition to Almighty God. <laughs> For Pope Francis and the bishops, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For local and national leaders, may the Spirit of God move them to work together to protect the rights of all, including the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have wandered away from their faith in Jesus, may God get, grant them return. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For family and friends during this Easter season, may it be a time of faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they enter into the eternal life promised through Christ's resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now for the petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray uh, for healing for all those suffering from the coronavirus, <clears throat> especially those suffering in India uh, and Canada. May God help them and rally other nations and people around them to give them aid. Um, bless their doctors, nurses, and techs. Uh, and as he multiplied the lows, may he multiply the oxygen and uh, the, uh, the antiviral medicines that they need whatever that is, I don't know, ivermectin, whatever that is, may God give them what they need and heal the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pray for peace in the Middle East. Uh, may God open up minds and hearts and speak through people's consciences uh, and arrive at peaceful resolutions of conflict and, and, and bring an end to the, the struggle that's happening over there and give people work and care uh, and, and help and just keep people safe, especially for our brother and sister Christians. May God cause them to shine like saints and miraculously work through them to heal, uh, to, to rebuild over there. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, turn toward us and hear the prayers you inspire us to ask. We ask them on the Feast of the Ascension on your day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, a Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. James, St. Martha, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you if you guys uh, participated and gave us a thumbs up. That's awesome. That does actually help. If you had to endure a commercial, that somehow helps Google pay their bills, but that lets us give the mass to you. So thank you for that. And some special also words of thanks to, uh, to one, to a young lady named Ella out there in California. Uh, she drew a wonderful picture, Ella, age seven. She says, I like your dog. She is cute. And isn't that a cute, that's a very cute picture of Cragley. Uh, and Cragley is doing much better. She uh, is more like herself. Uh, she's still on a little bit of pain medicine and resting, but she wants to play. She's grabbing her favorite toy and she's asking for playtime. And, and that's pretty good. We actually took, a, we, we tried a little play earlier and she was doing fine uh, as well. Uh, a thank you letter all to some folks in uh, Virginia. Uh, Karen and Steve, they write, my husband and three daughters, 18, 15, and 11. I don't think that's their names. I think those are their ages. <laughs> and I really enjoy watching your online mass every Sunday morning uh, throughout the pandemic in between our own church's mass. I explored other online masses throughout the neighborhood, country, and world. And that's been like a pretty cool thing for people to like, you know, like people have watched mass in the Vatican and people have watched mass in, you know, uh, Africa and Australia and People from Africa and Australia watch Mass over here, so hello to you guys. It's pretty cool to be able to do that. And she writes, once I found your Mass, my family refused to watch any other. God bless you guys. Uh, we love your meaningful, relevant messages that speak to all ages. Uh, in our family, we enjoy your humor and dad jokes. My husband is a Jersey native and appreciates all the references to pork roll, egg, and cheese. Uh, our girls love seeing Cragley. Uh, as do two of their other family members. And I've not had anyone watch from this family group before. Uh, and so these are, this is Cinnamon and Oreo. And Cinnamon and Oreo are two guinea pigs. So hello to you guys, or girls, I'm not sure. But hello, hello, Cinnamon and Oreo. I think Cinnamon flavored Oreos would be delicious, but I don't think guinea pigs would be delicious. God bless you guys and your animal kingdom. Thank you, Karen. Uh, and Steve and the girls out there, and Oreo and Cinnamon. God bless you guys in all the ways that you live this higher calling that God puts into all of us. Now, uh, a question as we think about the animal kingdom. Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be bagels. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. I forgot the hallelujah. Amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> that was a real tongue twister. Your hands shout to God with. I can't. Get, <laughs> I can't get through it. There's too many words.